Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about how rotating your max effort lifts trains your brain to think like a winner and to PR all the time. And I want to lead this off. I'm showing one of my decent PRs just to lead this off so that people don't think that I'm some really weak guy who deadlifts 500 pounds or something uh, making these statements. I'm 43 years old. I did this lift weighing 220. And that's 615, and I'm going to hit 650 this year, guaranteed. So what do I mean by it trains you to think like a winner? Because every time I'll come up and I'll say, hey, PR, PR, because I vlog all of my workouts, all of my lifts, all of it goes up, and you know, occasionally get someone who comes in and says, that's not a PR, that's a, a weird, bizarre lift. That's a safety bar with chains. That's a football bar with bands. That's a two board press, right? They'll come in and they'll say something like that and they don't understand that what we mean by a PR is what? That it's a PR on that specific lift. It's a PR on that specific lift. And a lot of times guys will say, but that doesn't matter. How do you know if you're really progressing? Well, what do you mean? Let me give you an example. If you do 10 different bench presses, we won't even get into squat and deadlift, which are more of my bread and butter. Uh, I'm weaker at bench than I am at squat and deadlift. But let's talk about bench, everyone's favorite lift. If you have 10 different bench press variations, I don't care if it's the normal bench, the floor press, football bar, right? And then all of them with a certain amount of band tension, a certain amount of chain tension. You have all of these lifts and you every 10 weeks or so you hit the same lift over again in 10 weeks time if you can put five pounds on each one of those lifts then you've gotten stronger now novice lifters are hearing that and going what to five five pounds in 10 weeks that's nothing yeah for a novice for an advanced lifter to add five pounds to a lift consistently every 10 weeks is actually almost a miracle okay that is a sign of truly effective training. If you're not on gear and you can add five pounds every 10 weeks to a benching or pressing of any type, that's phenomenal. But the point is, let's come back over to that. It trains you to PR, okay? Because if you do all those lifts, say 10 weeks apart, and your training is on point all the way through those 10 weeks, you're going to PR again, right? If you've gained any muscle or any strength, you're going to keep PRing on those various lifts because you have 10 weeks to get better at each one, all right? Now, we could discuss quite a bit about how those lifts teach you to find your weak points, right? You watch those different lifts, and as long as you know what the weak links are in them, you can train those weak links. You can put extra focus on those weakest links that you see on every one of those lifts, and it might be a little bit different from each of those presses. Some of those presses might use muscles a little bit differently. But if you put a focus or an emphasis on your weakest links, every time you see it come out when you're going through hitting these PRs or you hit a grinder, what's going to happen? You're going to get better at it. You're going to get better at it. Undoubtedly going to get better at it. So if your training is on point, you're gaining muscle in the right places because you're doing a bunch of hypertrophy work for all the weak links, you're doing your supplemental work, your speed work, everything else, and you're practicing hitting maxes, of course you're going to get stronger at all those different lifts. Okay, You're going to get stronger at those different lifts. So what does this do for you? It teaches you to PR year-round. Now, some guys will say, well, what if I can't do it in 10 weeks? Well, you better come up with more than 10 different lifts. All right? You're going to need to add more and more variations and find ways to do variations. And we can get pretty creative with that. A, a couple bench blocks will go a long way. All right? Even if you don't have bands, chains, specialty bars yet, you got a straight bar. You have five different heights of board presses. You have a bench press. you got five different board presses. You got a closed grip bench, you got a dead pen bench, you do a closed grip dead pen bench, you do a floor press, closed grip floor press. You could do all those things, all right? That's nine different lifts, easily. That's before we even start trying to throw bands or chains or anything else on there. All right, so 
you add variations until you have enough time to get stronger. And it's important that you do that. It's important that you do that. Why? You've got to get into the habit of PRing all the time. And it doesn't matter that it's an arbitrary lift. It doesn't matter that it's not a contested lift. Because let's be realistic. As, as much as I might like powerlifting, and I say all the time, the squat, bench, and deadlift, when combined, are a fantastic judge of overall strength. They're a good balance and fantastic judge of overall strength because the three of them separated out account for different leverages. Okay? They're still arbitrary lifts. What if we change the bench press to a dead pin football bar? Would it be any less of a test of strength on pressing? No, it would be about the same amount of test of strength. What if we change the height on a deadlift? By changing the height of the plates, made them two inches bigger or two inches smaller in the standard diameter. Well, then we'd be pulling from a deficit or a block pull, wouldn't we? The plate heights that were selected and standardized decades ago, generations ago, are arbitrary. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? See where we're going? They're, they're somewhat arbitrary anyways. We put a lot of emotional emphasis on them because they're contested lifts. It's part of the problem. We get emotionally attached to them. All right, if we're not emotionally attached to the lifts and we just PR all the time, you program your brain to PR. You start to think of yourself as someone who gets stronger every single week because you PR on something every week. And people need to understand how confidence and self-programming work. What's the best way to self-program yourself? Through action. Through objective action. Like if you really want to feel better about yourself in some way, go achieve something. I don't care how small it is. By consistently achieving small victories all the time, on a regular basis, you program yourself to have a higher self-esteem and a higher self-confidence. You also think of yourself, in this case, as someone who gets stronger every single week. You also think of yourself as someone who every time they get under a new lift, or even an old lift, they PR. It becomes your normal. So when you get to a competition, you just expect to PR, because that's what you always do, right? Yeah, you, you PR all the time. You PR every single week. It becomes not a big deal to hit a PR in a meet. In fact, it becomes expected. It becomes your normal. It trains your brain to think like a winner, to think like a champion, to have confidence when you get under a heavy weight. Because if you're used to maxing on all sorts of different exercises all the time and finding your groove, as people forget that, don't they? They're like, oh, well, you just want to wrap. No, it's not. You're ramping up. You have to find your groove every time you get on one of these lifts. If you're used to finding your groove on awkward weights all the time, you're never worried about getting out of your groove. Okay? Because if you miss groove, you're going to be safe. You're, you're used to pushing through these different awkward angles. In fact, you're going to have a lower injury risk, by the way. Both in training and in competitions. Right? And a max is a max. Maxing is a skill. It's not always lift specific. Maxing out is a skill. Learning to strain is a skill. It's something you learn through training. These lifts carry over to each other. A box squat with chains will carry over to your back squat. But the point here is that you PR all the time. And as arbitrary and silly as it sounds, anyone who's ever competed in anything or anyone who's ever been a winner at anything understands exactly the value of that. It matters a lot. It will change your attitude and it will change your self-perception. Because you know that you get stronger every single week. And it gives you an objective metric to know where you are on your big lift. So every time you do get to a lift that matters to you, you PR. You can predict how much you're going to PR by. People say, what? 
Yeah, because if you know how many pounds apart this other variation tends to be from your normal lift, you know that whatever PR you hit on it, it's what you're going to hit on your big lift. In other words, if you get a 10 pound PR on your floor press, you know for a fact you added 10 pounds to your bench press. What's going to happen next time you bench press? You're going to get a 10 pound PR. It's already done. You already know you can do it. And you're confident when you get under the weight. Because you have a pattern that you see over and over and over in your training rotations. And it happens like clockwork. Alright guys, well that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.